This video is supported by the Internet Society in an effort to assist tribal nations with getting their 2.5 gigahertz licensed networks up and running. Hi there. My name is Christopher Mitchell, and I'm the director of the Community Broadband Networks Initiative at the Institute for Local Self-Reliance. Welcome to a series about LTE networks. We're going to explore everything from why LTE networks are, are really great options for broadband deployment to the basics of building and configuring your own LTE network. So I hope you enjoy this series. I want to start this video by introducing uh, two of the folks that will be joining me. Deborah Simpier here from Althea. We also have Spencer Sevilla, who is the champion LTE community network builder, uh, reigning supreme in the entire uh, known universe of mankind. So um, Deb, let's talk about LTE. Why are we doing a video series about configuring LTE? And, and more to the point, like why LTE? Why not other forms of, of wireless technology? Yeah, I, I, I got to tell you, I'm very, very excited about LTE um, in, the, in the tribal space and in, you know, connectivity in general, right? So um, we, when we normally think about broadband, we think about broadband to the home, it's, you know, it's, it's fiber, it's glass, it's pieces, but that's not where people interact with technology and connectivity. We interact with, on our devices, our laptops, our phone, and a lot of times our phones, right? And now in, in the kind of future looking space, we interact with connectivity with the SIM card in your car, with the SIM card um, maybe in your smart devices in your home, in your ring, in your, um, or in your smart cities, right? All of these things are device level access, right? And that's really where the expansiveness of, of LTE comes in, right? Because we're interacting directly to the device. Everything is authorizing and interacting from um, the rest of the internet, basically to your, you know, your little SIM card, right? Which kind of, ah, da there's Althea's SIM, da-da. Um, <laughs> and I think that's what's so expensive about LTE. It's, it's everything from, actually, I was just talking to a tribe about um, wanting to put in wildfire monitoring, um, you know, up in their mountains, right? In, in the forest, right? Um, we can do that with LTE technology um, and, and um, we can also, you know, do really interesting things with slicing and, and user control um, all the way down to the phone. And, and I, I'm, I'm very excited about what the, what the future looks like. And, and Spencer, your, your specialty is in LTE. So uh, obviously you are, are, are a big proponent of it, but, but why, why that? Why is it so much better than, than Wi-Fi? And you have to explain it to someone who doesn't really know what Wi-Fi is, except that they use it on their phone also. A great question. <clears throat> um, so where we started getting excited about LTE uh, several years ago, building a community network, building a community network out in Papua, and you build these kind of wireless mesh networks, the traditional kind of point to point to points and all these antennas. And then in the LTE space, you have so much better uh, transmission power and signal strength and propagation of the frequencies you're allowed to use. Um, the fact that you're operating in kind of a licensed model, it's really hard to get a license, but that also means you don't have to worry about anyone interfering with you. So we were in this, you know, this village in a jungle of a thousand people, maybe more. And you put up a base station with two antennas, you point them either direction, you cover the whole village, you shake hands and you go home. And that was like, oh man, this is, we're not doing this endless rollout of mounting all these hardware and stuff. We're just connecting directly to people's phones. It, um, the network's been online for several years and continues to just Kind of thrive. I mean, there's a lot of uh, the backhaul actually is this three megabit satellite link. So, so that's uh, really hard. But that's outside of the uh, the community networking part. So the the issue is that is that LTE just it, it's it provides a different set of tools for maybe a different set of circumstances, and um, and I, we're going to talk about why how it's different. When we talk about the evolved packet core, we're going to talk about SIM cards and management. We're going to talk about a variety of things. And I think the part that people just, I think need to get is that like there's different technologies for different purposes. And 
And if I'm understanding correctly, LTE is particularly well suited for distributing, um, you know, in areas where you don't have line of sight, you don't want to mount a whole bunch of radios and you just want to go direct from the tower to the device without having intermediaries. Totally. That's a great, um, that's a great kind of summary at, at, the, at like this high level of like, what are the benefits here in when you're kind of choosing between technologies or you're trying to say, we need to cover this large area, how are we going to start doing it? And um, definitely we can go as specific as we want as to like why that's the case, but especially with LTE, you start getting access to such a broader coverage pattern where you're not, where you're able to say, here's the tower, here's like this, you can map out where it covers and then people have phones that support it, or you can install, you know, little um, CPE on their houses to, to configure it. And you really, um, the propagation is much greater. The coverage is much greater in an area. And then from there, it makes it way easier to roll out than uh, supporting individual users or adding them. Now, the other thing that I think we want to cover in this overview is the spectrum itself. And one of the things that I feel like people might be listening to is like, well, Chris, I think you're a big proponent of unlicensed spectrum. And I am. I love unlicensed spectrum. I love lightly licensed spectrum. Like, um, and LTE is something that you can use in a variety of spectrums, right? Like, how does um, how does this work together? Like, how do we? How can we square these things? Totally. So these things are really closely related because when you have unlicensed spectrum, um, it's great because anyone can just turn on a device, right? You know, everything from a garage door opener to uh, literally a microwave uh, to you know um, Wi-Fi in two point four five gigahertz bands. And so this is wonderful. Anyone can just turn on a device, but the downside is you spend a lot of your time in the radio protocol saying like, hey, I'm going to transmit because anyone hear me? And you're like, yeah, okay, now it's clear. And you spend all this time playing defense because we could be lining up a transmission and someone else, my neighbor could turn on their Wi-Fi in the middle of it. This is, you know, this is the downside of unlicensed spectrum, right? Anyone can just jump in and start chatting. Um, and so with LTE, what you see is there's two things that go hand in hand where it gets way better um, throughput because it assumes that it's the only person operating. The cell tower is just in charge of this chunk of frequency and says, you, you're allowed to talk now, you shut up now, now it's your turn to talk. And it can do this. And it's going to assume that there's never any conflicts. And it assumes that because it's designed for a licensed regime where I bought my license from the FCC or whomever. And we can talk, there's a lot of ways that's, that's just going to be approved, right? Licensing is hard and ices out a lot of small operators. But once you have this license, you can just go at a very high transmit power. Oftentimes the frequencies that are licensed are very, very good for propagation. So you get really good coverage and signal strength. Um, one of the reasons why the unlicensed bands are unlicensed is that they're pretty bad for coverage. They're, um, yeah, Deb knows about this. Deb, Deb's, <laughs> Deb's excited to jump in about that. Go for it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I, I just want to echo that as well. And um, I, I think for, for folks that are setting up networks um, in the unlicensed band there, um, if you are the only game in town, right, then then everything works pretty well. Um, but uh, but there's a lot of frequency interference, which sort of like rapidly breaks down, um, you know, over time. And then it also makes it, in, you know, um, the potential for a non-sustainable network. Well, right now, the network works well. The, there's no interference, everything's built, but in the future, that's my, you know, may not be the case. Right. So, um, you know, you're constantly having to evolve on that space. For those who are working in indigenous areas, um, they may have access to 2.5 gigahertz licenses. Um, that is like, it's pretty special, right? I mean, this isn't like the, this isn't just sort of making do with what you have. This is actually prime opportunity. It seems like. Yeah, 2.5 gigahertz is um, is an amazing uh, frequency. Uh, it's it has kind of both uh, the properties of being somewhat non line of sight, right? Um, as, as you go lower down in frequency to like the sub one gigahertz, you know, it gets better at penetrating. Um, but the higher throughput, you know, your um, you know your millimeter wave, like 60 gigahertz, is really great at at high throughput. Well, 2.5 is kind of right there in that sweet spot, right, where you have you know you can you can give broadband level uh, throughput and performance in some. I, I would say you know we're in a little bit of non line of sight near line of sight, right? Um, it's not going to be quite like a sub one gigahertz, you know. 10 miles, uh, you know, and through dense trees, but it's going to give you some flexibility that you just really can't get with like five gigahertz. And you are working directly with several tribes right now, uh, to help build out, right? That's right. And, and we also have a, an, um, 
uh, an ongoing partnership with George Mason and People Centered Internet to build what we call a tribal resource center. And that's uh, funded uh, through a grant from the Internet Society as well. So there's really a great collaboration of folks going uh, to coming together now to, to build that sort of, you know, resources along with ILSR and um, this group that's here. Awesome. And Spencer, what are you working on this summer? Yeah, we're trying to, you know, get tribes stood up with 2.5. Like a lot of tribes have gotten their licenses, which is fantastic. And I'm sure as in one of these discussions, we'll talk about what, like how crazy that whole process was for better and worse. But now we have these licenses and a lot of tribes are looking at this relatively short-term rollout process where you've got to get a link up between, um, I'm not sure if it's within a year or two years. Um, you can tell years, I'm a I policy think. guy. Um, <laughs> but uh, now the now there's kind of this grand race to get these networks up and operational because there's this great licensing opportunity. The equipment's cheap. We need to build as much capacity as possible in terms of teaching and educating and getting people running these networks. And we need to actually get them off the ground and transmitting. So that's a uh, that's that's what I'm looking at. We are where we are because of some changes in terms of how we do a spectrum. And if we are successful in this, we will continue to have more opportunities. So people really need to take advantage of this so that we can continue the good progress we've seen in Washington, D.C. to make sure that we have Spectrum available and that people can use it to build the networks that are needed. So there's a, a much larger vision. This isn't just about the 2.5 gigahertz space. Um, but it's exciting, and we're, we really hope that you enjoy this series. We're trying to make it fun as well as super educational. Thank you both so much for joining us and, and making this series happen. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for coordinating this. <laughs>